Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to another Let's Save Your Disaster <laughs> game. And uh, this one is a doozy. Wow. Right. We have we have problems. Uh, it's turn 75. <laughs> oh, God. This is immortal. So at least it's not Didi. So we, we've got we've got a lot of problems. Uh, problem one, uh, your city of Brazilla has been captured by uh, Pe uh, Persia. Uh, problem two, you've been building a monument for the last God knows how long and you've been in a war for four turns. You should not finish this monument. You should be building military. We have one archer. <laughs> We have one archer. This is our entire military. We have lots of pins placed, which is nice. We have one archer. Uh, and this particular archer is is in a bad spot. He's he's on a holy site, which is... That's great, right? Well, on a holy site, but uh, he has no experience. So we've got kind of, kind of a few things that we could do here. Uh, we do have a religion. That is good. That is good. Let's have a look and see if there's any more productive tiles in the capital. Right. Uh, we have gold. This is bad. This is really bad. This I've I this is bad. We're turn seventy five. We have one archer. We have two cities. That's these are all problems. Uh, we don't have enough cities. We don't have enough military. We're finishing a monument. Well, I mean, I guess we may as well finish that monument uh, since there's only one turn left in it. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at the government. Right, we do have a goggin and we do have urban planning. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, we're researching drama and poetry. You should not research drama and poetry. You should research military tradition because military tradition grants flanking and support combat bonuses to all your combat units. This means war is uh, easier. It's much, much easier. Uh, you don't have a monument in your capital. You should have a monument in your capital by now. Uh, in fact, you should build a monument in your capital before you build it in these other cities because it's only eight turns of production here. Uh, yeah, we're going to need to cancel that builder. We're going to finish this warrior, even though it's not going to do much. And see if we can survive. Now, the best... <laughs> there's no escape here. Is this a hill? Okay, this is a hill, so he shouldn't be able to shoot over it. So there's a very slight chance that we escape here. And we need to do damage to this guy right here. Uh, if he declared a surprise war, he'll be able to move and kill this archer. But we need to do damage to this guy to cut down on uh, how much stuff. What can we purchase? Uh, we cannot purchase anything. We should be able to purchase a warrior in, like, three turns. So that's going to help. Uh, basically, he asked me to get him to the point where he would survive. And I think we can uh, maybe do that. It's a very, very low chance. Because this is just too much. Now, if I had been given this save a few turns ago, uh, when the war originally started, maybe I could do something. But we're going to let this warrior spawn, and his job is to basically give this city combat strength. We're also not going to be finishing masonry. We're going to be going for the wheel, because we need a heavy chariot. Because by b building the heavy chariot, it will give us a melee strength of 28, rather than the 20 of the warrior. And the extra 28 combat strength. So the warrior has 20 combat strength, which means it is setting the combat strength of this city to 25. If I were to get a warrior, we would add another eight, which would bring up the combat strength of the city to 20, uh, to 33. So that's why we're gonna go for the wheel. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get that in time. We are going to continue to build archers. We could maybe purchase another warrior. Yeah, this is, this is bad, okay. Let's see, can I get Wilfred Laurier to join my war? He will not join my war, that's unfortunate. Uh, you do have iron. You should have gone for ironworking, in my opinion, although I'm not sure where you're getting that iron from. Let me have a quick look at the terrain map mode. Looks like you settled on iron, which is a bit unfortunate. Also, you, uh, you voluntarily settled off fresh water. Right? Is that is that a thing that you did? As far as I can tell, you did. Yeah, it looks like he settled off fresh water, which is not ideal. You you could have positioned this slightly better, but it's fine. Um, this is really bad. I don't think we live. I don't think we. I don't think this is a winnable game. Actually, I mean, we converted the city, which is cool. Uh, so we need to survive another three turns, and then we might be able to get peace. And if we can get peace, we can survive. But I'm pretty doubtful. <laughs> I'm pretty doubtful that we'll be able to survive here. So the best thing to do is to pull this warrior out of the city, because the city is dead. We'll keep the warrior alive by doing this. Alright. 
we have an archer and we're losing loyalty in this city. You know, this is bad. This is uh, this is really bad. We can save a bit of loyalty. We've got 19 turns. Let's pull that warrior back a tile. And let's get another archer. I don't think we can win this game. Let's trade up Montreal. It's a safe trade route direction. This is bad. I've never seen... This is uh, This is really, really bad. We can get a kill. If I step back, I should still be able to shoot. Step back there. This is just an unfortunate circumstance where I don't know if we're going to be able to win this. Had I had I had the game at the start of the war, I think I might have been able to save this. But as it stands, this is just far too deep into the game to really save it. We're also going to need to get extra loyalty in here. We are going to have a second archer. I'm going to pull this guy back. You can't actually shoot over the city. It's really, really important, and this has happened a lot in the games, is make sure you settle in a city that's defensible. This is not a defensible city. We're not even going to get this kill, which really sucks. Um, yeah, it's really, really important that you settle in a defensible city location. And it's important to think of where you're going to be attacked from and where you're going to be defending from. So I'm going to step this archer out to try and bait in attacks. I'm going to cut his damage down. I'm going to send this great general back to the city so it's not providing combat bonuses to this immortal. And then I'll go to the next turn. I don't know if we can win this, but I almost killed that guy. Step you back. Yep, I don't think I don't think there really was a way to win that game. So this is what we call this isn't so much a disaster game as it was just a complete and total uh, complete and total catastrophe. Like there, I don't think there's anything I could do different there. Um, well, there is a couple of small things that I could do. So let's let's run through that again, and um, we'll uh, we'll try that again because that that is this is just. There's certain situations that are too far gone, and it's important that you guys are able to recognize these. Um, it, so, when you imagine a game of civilization, it's important to think of your civilization, your game of civilization, as if you were like uh, managing a freight train. Um, speed, like momentum you gather in a particular direction, is very hard to change in Civilization VI. It's very hard to change gears. And and the the momentum you had in this particular game was very much so in a in a very downward direction. Now, in order to change direction, you need a lot of time to to bring the speed down and change the direction, right? Because the the velocity of your game or the direction your game is going has a certain amount of resistance to directional change. So you you can basically imagine. I'm going to send the archer to the left this time in the hopes that that helps. Basically, imagine that you have... Uh, so, so things you do now only have consequences uh, sometime in the future, right? So that's, that's how to think about this. So if we build an archer now, that has consequences. X, like five turns from now, I'm going to have an archer. And in this particular game, the things that have happened, you know, five turns ago, before the start of this war... That's the time in the game that I need to be able to act from. So it's very important when you send me a save file that you give me it at like a reasonable time frame because there's a, there's a momentum. And the momentum here is just too far gone in the wrong wrong direction. Also, I don't know why you have... I don't, I don't know what happened to your military also. And, I, and you need to give me like a little bit of context as well when you're sending me the save file. Basically, he said, I was playing a mortal difficulty and I got surprise war declared by Persia and I don't want to know if it's salvageable. It's not. I just can't deal with his immortals. Could you please try to stabilize and maybe take it to a point where it'd be pretty like you, like you could win with it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it with this game. So sometimes games are just too far gone. Right. Um, and that's just the way it is. Okay, this is actually going worse than it did originally. So let's reload that. We, we're going we're gonna to give this a few. We're going to give this a few tries. See if we can pull it off. I don't know if we will. Genuinely don't know if this game can be saved. I'm trying to think about the best way to describe that momentum. So if you build a campus 
All right, let's say you need science right now. You in, in Civ, you can't do things for right now except for purchasing gold. You you can only do things for some time in the future. So building a campus doesn't help you researching the technology that you're researching right now. It helps you research every single technology after that. So in a similar manner, building warriors, like building <laughs> building warriors now is too late. Building archers now is too late because the the momentum of the game has gone in a direction that is not going to be in your favor. Does that hopefully kind of make, make sense, right? It's too late. To fix this game is basically what I'm saying. So we got that archer killed, that's fine. This warrior is gonna spawn. We're gonna stand this warrior here. We're going to purchase another warrior. We're going to cancel that builder. We're gonna go for the archer. We are going to look for any production at all. So these fishing tiles, I should have not been working these. You should be working exclusively productive tiles. And that's about it. I could have maybe purchased another productive tile, but that's going to shave a turn off the archer down to five turns. I don't know if we can survive five turns. We're just going to fortify all of our units and try to buy time with these warriors. We could maybe get a kill here. We have our first archer coming. These guys are absorbing hits. That's good. We can shoot that archer. All right, another archer coming out. So we're 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 doing better than we were. The city is still alive, and we have an archer. That is a big deal. I could maybe kill this guy, but it would require me to attack twice my warriors, and I don't want to do that because they're right now they're doing a great job absorbing damage. I'm going to step forward with this guy to prevent more attacks on the city. I'm going to step forward with this guy to kill this warrior. Now only this spearman should be able to make an attack. I could attack that spearman, but I'm going to stay fortified. I'm hoping this city survives. All right, city just barely survived, and now we have two archers. If we get enough focus fire on the spearmen, we might be able to save the city. Okay, the city is now blocked from being captured. That's a really big deal. Also, I'm going to get rid of these pins because they're just making it difficult for me to see what I'm doing. The city is now blocked. That means they actually can't take the city this turn, as far as I can tell. So we bought ourselves another turn. We need to kill this warrior and then take that position. Movement cost two. Kill the warrior, take the position, stay fortified. Shoot him. Shoot that slinger. Okay, we're by. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, let's get a friendship. Uh, get open borders with this guy for a little bit of cash. We, we can't use our iron for anything, so I'm going to sell it to him while he still has money to trade. He's going to give me 6 gold per turn and 17 gold. Alright. Stay fortified there, little warrior. You're buying me time. There's machinery, there's masonry. We're not going to be able to get that. I should have switched to the wheel. We're going to go for ironworking now. We might be able to get one of those up. The slinger is not a threat right now. The archer has to step here because we need to block anyone from attacking the city. I'm going to take volley so that I can do a little bit more damage in the coming turns. We're getting another archer out. We have held, okay? For now. We need to focus fire on melee units. The ranged units will focus on shooting the city, so we need to damage this spearman over anything else. Because the spearman will melee attack my units. 
Okay, the city is about to fall. Can I buy one more turn for an archer? I don't think I can. That's unfortunate. Okay, we bought another turn. That's a big deal. Let's step everyone to the north. Take a shot. Step you to the north. Can you kill that immortal? Okay. <laughs> I don't know how I'm still alive. This guy still hasn't gotten a level up, even though he's taken so many hits. It's like this guy will step across the river and attack the city. Okay, no, we are surviving. Somehow we are alive. Okay. Send that great uh, general back. Okay, we have... We've survived. It took me 13 turns, and now I believe I'm in a position that I can survive this war. I could get peace, I believe. He would want me to cede Brazilla. No, he doesn't want peace yet. He feels he's too strong. Now, one big problem that we have right now is that we are behind and continuing to fall behind. So he has 30 science and 46 culture, 47 culture per turn. We have 7 and 3, which means we need to get out of this war. Um, I'm going to follow you back into the city. And just keep cycling my units in and out until I have enough to push back. I'll take some hits. Alright, let's have a look. What can we focus on? This guy's a little bit weaker. This guy has ideal terrain. I'm going to focus on this guy because he's more of a threat. We have another archer. Is this a hill? This is a plains hill with plains hills all around. I would have to step forward here, which opens me up to dying. And there's a spearman there, which is not good. Step you back for safety. I'm going to take the garrison promotions. This guy has plus 10 combat strength. We're going to continue to do damage. I'm going to step you onto this hill so you have a slightly better view of the surrounding terrain. Your delegation is most welcome. Let's step you. Let's pull the warrior back to here. Step this archer forward. We need to deal with this spearman. Take the garrison promotion. Where do we do our damage? I'm going to... I think if I focus fire this guy, I can get him killed. Okay, we killed an immortal. <laughs> I don't know how I'm alive, boys. Um, we need blockers, I think. So let's get ourselves a warrior. They're continuing to focus the city. We now have two units with garrison on our districts, which means we have really high damage output available to us. I'm going to retreat this archer because he's a little bit vulnerable. Let's kill there. I'm focusing on this guy, even though he's on more defensive terrain, because he's just in a he's in a bigger threatening position because he is the, the road crossing, right? Okay, I think I think uh, I think we've actually managed to run out of Persia, like we've run down Persia's steam, and so now we can start pushing back, very carefully. There's a slinger. I could cross the river and maybe kill this, but I, I need to keep my my warriors alive. Warriors are basically so. Think of your melee units as walls, right? They are health walls. They are unit walls. They exist to absorb damage. Dead Slinger, you heal up, you come there. We're going to step across now. We're starting to regain terrain. We're going to work on Brazilla. We need just a constant stream of archers. That's why the trade route over here is really helpful. Okay, we're also in a Golden Age. This is like perfect for retaking our empire. And we are going to have to do this through Ancient Warfare. It's the only option available to us. I'm going to step the warrior up onto this hill so both of these archers can still act. 
I could take a promotion here, but I'm going to get a promotion with this warrior by killing this immortal. That's going to make this immortal stro uh, this guy stronger. This guy needs to step back. Ideally to here. We're going to make a dedication. Uh, right now, we have a decent amount of faith, so I'm going to take Monumentality. We're also we're in a Dark Age, so I'm going to take Pen, Brush, and Voice, which will give us plus one culture for each specialty district. And I'm also going to take Exodus the Evangelist, because the plus four great profit points are going to translate into more faith. And now we need to do something a little bit unorthodox. We're going to start purchasing Settlers. Also, you don't have Magnus assigned, which is a little bit weird. Um, you should have Magnus assigned. I don't know how I missed that, but he should be assigned so that we could purchase Settlers without suffering a penalty. Unfortunately, I am going to have to purchase a Settler and suffer a penalty here. And I'm going to do it in Guadu Gu Guarolos. We're going to purchase this Settler to get this city settled. We need another city. If we can get another city up, then we're in a better shape. We're going to purchase ourselves a Monument just because we're so far behind that we need some sort of source of uh, culture. We're also now in a position where we can... Uh, we need our, We still need to pump out archers because our only hope is to basically carpet siege this guy with archers uh, and hope that he doesn't build walls. That's pretty much the only thing we have that can save us here is hoping he doesn't build walls. Okay, so he always vote for yourself once, twice maybe, and I will say city center as well. So vote for yourself and vote for the city center. Okay, so new districts act as a culture bomb. See that? I passed it. It's me. And nobody else voted for me as far as I can tell, right? Yep, nobody else voted for me just for whatever reason because I'm the player. I'm the number one player. So I'm I'm player one, so the game will default to me in a tie. And AI never vote more than once in this. Usually I put two votes in just to secure it. City center almost always passes. Not only that, but picking both of those up gave me two diplomatic victory points, which means this could translate into a diplomatic victory game if you so wish. All right, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to hopefully retake as much of this as I can with momentum. I'm going to step here with you. You are going to... You need to promote. So I'll step you forward. I'll step you forward. I'll shoot you. I'll get the kill with this warrior because that's easy experience to get on the warrior. And getting experience on warriors can be quite difficult when you're behind technologically because everything you're trying to attack is really, really powerful. Okay, there is this. This is flipping independent. We can't wait for that to flip independent. I really need you to have the volley. I'm going to... Is this two movement? This is two movement, so I'm going to take the battle cry promotion on you. I'm going to step you onto this hill. Things are looking okay for us right now. Like, th this could be a lot worse considering our starting position. We've been about 25 turns and all we've achieved... So this is kind of what I was talking about, the momentum. It took me 25 turns just to stabilize my capital. So... That's what I talk about. That's what I mean when I talk about how there's a there's a inertia to your game. It takes time to change the direction of your civilization. I'm going to take this kill. I'm going to keep these archers healing because it's important that they heal. So what is our religion? This really should have been a uh, defender defender or crusade in my opinion. Uh, although it depends on when you founded your religion. I can kind of forgive you for that. So, uh, timing on this settler literally could not be better. Canada was literally about to settle here. We're about to cock block him, which is a big deal. We do have a friendship with Canada, so we don't have to worry about that. We did lose a warrior. Unfortunately, you never chop down all this woods and stuff, so getting shots is difficult. Um, in fact, we're going to immediately get a builder. Let's see if we can't chop this forest to make our life a little bit easier. We're going to step back with these guys. We have like an archer wall now. And we're going to start slowly pushing the wall forward. Problem is immortals are very, very difficult to deal with. If we can get swordsmen, we'll be in a much better position to deal with them. We have three turns in the capital. Let's grab ourselves another warrior to replace the warrior we just lost. We grabbed an archer in here. Let's finish that monument. I now feel safe finishing that monument. We're going to immediately go for a monument in here. Because we need just a little bit of culture. Ideally science though is what we need. To really catch up but there's a plus five campus right there so i'm going to place that plus five campus and i'm also going to purchase a builder here and then i'm going to move magnus to this city 
not the city, sorry, reassign Magnus to Fortaleza. Um, wait for this, wait five turns so we can chop out this campus in a reasonable amount of time. This builder will be going to this forest to cut that down. Stay fortified. He's fortified on a hill, on a rainforest, which means he's getting plus six combat strength. He's also getting plus three from being fortified. And next turn, he'll get plus six from being fortified, which means he is currently, if we take this as his thing, he is plus seven against the mortal. So he has 27 base. He has two damage. So that means he is currently uh, 20, 20 plus seven plus nine is he's a 36. He's basically a swordsman on the defense. Um, which means he can absorb a lot of hits from these immortals, especially since their ranged combat is a bit lot lower. Yeah, I'm sorry. I will take that diplomatic favor. And the reason I'm going to take the diplomatic favor and promise not to settle near him is for two reasons. First of all, I'm not going to sell my iron, but I will give you open borders. Uh, the reason I'm taking that diplomatic favor... Wow, I didn't expect that. Uh, also, we can't embark, which is a problem because now this warrior can't escape. The reason I'm going to take that is because I'm going to immediately turn around and sell that back to him. And there's nowhere for me to settle anyway. So I'll just take whatever I can off you. Gold-wise, 18 gold per turn. That's a lot of gold. Okay, but we're not out of the woods yet because we are not out of the woods yet. It's that simple. You've taken damage. And the problem is there's a lot of like rough terrain here that I can't make work. Let me see here. Range strength. You have the range strength. Where's my garrison archer? I can't get a garrison archer into the city. That's fine. You step here. Take your level. If I could just get a smidge more damage on this guy, I'm going to run my warrior into him. Because he serves no purpose. Let's get some tile improvements. Let's get ourselves another builder in this city. Also, you never, you didn't get any builders ever, which is a mistake. Also, Nazgarmu should definitely have an envoy in it. And we should have probably plugged in. Uh, we don't have our tier 2 government yet. Oh, we finished drama and poetry. I forgot to switch to military tradition. Okay, I messed up a lot here. I should have had military tradition. In fact, I'm tempted to restart this. But you can even see, even though I'm not playing perfectly, I uh, the reason I didn't change this is because I thought I already had, but I forgot that I reloaded the save. Which is why I also didn't change away from masonry. So these were two big mistakes. Uh, I just forgot to reset my civic and tech progression. But even though even though I did, even though I did that, I was totally fine. Also, uh, generally speaking, don't rush drama and poetry until you have political philosophy. Political philosophy is incredibly important. Uh, so the reason why is if you look at this cost 110 culture this cost 110 culture you're spending 110 culture you're spending 110 culture just to have the ability to spend production on something whereas you could spend 110 culture to have the ability to actually get something for just spending culture and that is getting a new government with new cards so that's why even if you're rushing a culture game never get drama and poetry first always political philosophy over these side ones the only exception is if you're going for a diplomatic victory and you want to go for the mahabodhi temple sometimes if you have a really strong religion game with culture like choral music and stuff like that you can kind of push past political philosophy to get mahabodhi temple but other than that i would never ever ever recommend uh researching before okay builder you're going to step on this forest you're going to wait there all right so we're back to where we were Kind of. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this jungle. I'm going to swap these because he's a little bit vulnerable. I'm going to take Arrow Storm. Head here, build a quarry. And the reason why you didn't want to research uh, masonry as well is that you had a quarry available that you could improve, which would have, you know, it would have saved you time and money and all that sort of stuff. I'm going to wait one turn on this because I'm going to wait one turn on this chop because this warrior will come out soon. Since we're researching ironworking and finishing a warrior on the same turn, what will happen is the warrior research will happen first. And then this will be automatically transformed into a swordsman and will essentially have pre-built a swordsman. So uh, just keep an eye and you'll, you'll see what happens here when I end the turn, right? This warrior will become a swordsman that is about half built. You can see there, he became a swordsman that's half built because we were building a warrior at the same time as we were researching this technology. So now we're going to get that warrior in one turn. That swordsman in one turn, rather. 
Okay. Uh, Magnus is established in two turns over in Fortaleza, so we'll be able to get a bit of science to catch up. We've got an immortal problem up here. Let's focus on this weaker guy. So let's have a look. Where else? I want to chop that forest over there. This city needs builder charges. What is something important that I could harvest out here? Right, so I can harvest for 45 production. What could I do with 45 production in this city? A government plaza would be very nice. I'm going to put it right there. It's going to cost me gold. I'm going to harvest to get it done in three turns. This archer is going to step here to heal. The reason I'm getting the government plaza is because it provides, provides loyalty, but more important, it allows me to make better use of the political philosophy investment of my culture, and it'll also give me another governor title. For example, I could get Victor, I could get Pingala, especially is really, really good. If I could park Pingala over in Fortaleza, for example, I might be able to go get good value out of him. Or if I can get him triple promoted and put him in the capital, I'll be able to get seven science and culture per turn. Uh, so we have iron, so stirrups is probably our best bet. Uh, maybe machinery first. Let's go ahead and grab the wheel. Machinery into stirrups, so crossbowmen and knights are going to be our transition if we can survive this. I'm getting this weird bug, and I hate this bug. It's where you can't shoot someone, even though you can. God damn it, I hate that bug. It really bothers me. Alright, so we took a couple hits, it's fine. We have our very first official swordsman. Let's step this archer back. He can take a shot there. Step you to here. Shoot there. Shoot there. You'll be able to attack next turn. You can also shoot there. This guy is going to heal. We have one build charge. I'm going to get this amenity online. And the reason I'm getting this amenity online is because I can immediately turn around and sell that to... Oh shit, he already had it. I didn't. I accidentally double clicked there. I did not mean to double click there. I should not have sold that to him for one gold. In fact, I'm kind of tempted to reload that. Because that was just a uh, that was a misclick. All right, so let's let's just redo this turn. Um, I believe I stepped this archer back. I shot here. I stepped this here. Just doing the regular stuff. Um, what I want to do here is I want to improve this and then sell it to someone who doesn't have access to this luxury. So this guy will give me nine gold per turn. That was what I meant to do. I kind of I just messed up basically. Um, really that simple. And don't be afraid to reload if you make like a, a critical error. Okay, we need to do a significant amount of damage to this guy. You have lost how much health? I'm going to have you fortify while this guy shoots. Ah, uh, I should have kept that because if I could get other people to declare war, that would have been good. However, we can't do anything about that now. We're going to get ourselves a second swordsman. Swordsmen are going to be... Remember, think of swordsmen as... Uh, meat walls, right? They are your blockers. They are your shield. They are the thing that protects you from the big bad wolf. While your archers sit at the back and deal damage. Okay, looks like somebody decided to pass this. I'm going to vote in favor of that. Because if this passes, I will have a much more favorable war. Uh, so it looks like Wilfred joins me in the war. That's a big deal. And I get vision of Wilfred now. So this guy has minus two combat strength when fighting me right so that's a big deal right if you look at the immortal combat bonus it's plus three so now effectively they only have a plus one combat strength which is a big deal let's go ahead and take the volley promotion here take that shot there we're going to kill with this guy we're going to heal you up we're going to step these guys all forward i really need another builder to chop this forest this forest is preventing me from attacking from these two tiles onto this tile which is a huge reduction in my power projection in terms of damage potential but it's preventing me from attacking from this tile and this tile. Uh, okay, so we've met a whole bunch of more sieves. I'm going to place this into Kabul. The reason I'm putting it into Kabul is because I will get plus two production in my capital when producing units, which will mean I'll produce units more efficiently. Production is more important than anything else right now. We have minus five amenities in the capital, which is really bad. Nothing I can do about that. That is just the nature of things. Magnus is established in this ca city. We can now chop and finish this campus extremely quickly and efficiently. That science is going to help us catch back up into the game. 
All right, this immortal has stepped across. This archer. Can I kill this guy? That is the question. If I can kill him. If he's dead, then I can safely kill this guy also. And then step forward with this guy. Get ready to chop this forest. We have another governor title. We're going to appoint Pangala. We're going to put Pangala in the capital. You are going to chop this jungle tile right here. All right. I think we're stabilizing. It's kind of a rough stabilization, but he's down to 131 military strength, which means we're essentially not under threat really anymore. That guy did a little bit too much damage to me for me to be comfortable. You go there. You go there. You go there. Promote. Step. Heal. Step back. Step back. Step here. We want to get us around on this city. We want a melee unit on this tile because this tile will control this side of the river. And we want a melee unit on this tile because these will control this side of the river. We're going to harvest this. This will finish the campus while also growing the city. And also the overflow production will go into a, a uh, library, which will allow us to catch up scientifically. Right now we're super behind scientifically, so we just need to start like putting out fires. And right now the war fire is basically out. He's also got settlers. We, we have to kill him now. That's just the unfortunate reality is we're going to have to completely kill him. Also, Canada is making gains, which is scary. Canada is going to be a big problem. This might just turn into a war game, unfortunately, um, just because of the position you were in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to a point where I think another player could take over the game and do fine. That's my goal. Step you away. Now, catapults usually don't target units, only in very rare circumstances. So I feel safe taking this out. If you're on this plains hill, I think you'll be able to shoot the city. Let's chop here to finish that swordsman. And then immediately get work on another swordsman. Three swordsmen should be more than enough. You can see, even though I've been at war and I'm taking heavy losses and all that sort of stuff, I still have positive gold. I have one build charge on this guy. What am I going to do with this build charge? Let's turn on yield icons. Look for a good tile to improve. Um, so what are you working right now? You're working pretty crappy stuff. I'd love to get this online. So can I do a swap and buy that? Let's get this. All right, uh, it's looking okay now. We've survived. This spearman needs to be dealt with. It's gonna require quite a bit of shooting. Ideally, I would love to be healing some of these guys. You can't actually hit him. I'll take incendiaries. So you want a mixture? You want a mixture of volley and arrow storm and garrison and incendiaries because that'll allow you to have versatility in how you approach taking enemy cities. A little farm triangle right here wouldn't wouldn't be a miss if you weren't planning on putting like aqueducts and stuff. Uh let's see, what could we improve? There's another copy of Amber over here. Let's get that builder in position to get that. Another big problem you have is that these cities are just really hard to take. We'll do our best, um, but it's going to take a while. Let's do some damage to this city. You're going to take the garrison promotion. Okay, so I, I officially believe that I have enough military to, to continue this war forever. I'm going to get to work on a granary. I'm going to work this tile and this tile. We want to work food. We want the city to grow if possible. We want to work high food tiles. We're going to improve the amber and then look for someone to immediately sell it to. Unless it's hitting a breakpoint in the capital, and it is hitting a breakpoint in the capital where it's saving us 20% of our yields in here. So I'm going to hold on to that amber until that's no longer the case. Okay, he has crossbowmen. That's really bad. That's uh, game over, actually. That's game over. Uh, so there's nothing we can do anymore. Well, maybe that's a little bit.
maybe that's a little bit um alarmist but this is really bad crossbowmen we can't deal with those this is what i was talking about you're behind in so many dimensions and there's so much momentum like look how long it's going to take us to get crossbowmen yeah all right it's going to take us nearly 40 turns he has crossbowmen now this is why we talk about momentum it's so important So the, mom the momentum is in his favor. And this is, this is what will happen in your games. Is you'll look like, oh man, I'm surviving. I'm winning. I'm going to live. And then something like this will appear. Because you have to consider the velocity of the game. The velocity of the game is in his favor right now. And that means he's getting units ahead of us. And we are, we are just so far behind that it's going to be hard to recover. The one saving grace we have is Swordsman. But it's not going to be enough. We need more tech. Um, and the problem is we need we needed tech... 40 turns ago to get to where he is now right so building tech now isn't going to help us so our only hope is to keep pumping just pumping archers and hoping that that's enough we also might want to get a couple of galleys to slam into tarsus um so like every turn he's just going to demolish one of these archers and i need to always have a different archer coming into view of his city The good news is that Friend Canada has arrived. The city is now officially surrounded. And we can start doing damage with our melee units now that the city is officially surrounded. I'm trying to think of what I can do with this builder. I really want this amber. I'm going to wait. For this tile to grow because that'll save me 80 gold if it does grow to there there you go this is what i'm talking about every turn a new archer is going to get hit that's the danger of cross -pumman. if he had walls we would lose a unit every single turn we try to attack him so our only saving grace right now is that he does not have walls we're going to take ideally i would take autocracy i'm going to take oligarchy though because i need the plus four combat strength and i also need the unit experience to be able to heal we're going to take conscription and we're also going to be taking uh Diplomatic League. Uh, charismatic Leader is fine. Ideally, we would take Strategos and have Great Generals coming, but we just don't have encampments because, you know, you didn't prepare for war early in the game, which is partially why we're in this position. Let's move this guy forward. Let's get all the damage with our archers first. Way to turn on killing the city. It'll be fine. Uh, trying to think of what we need. Theology probably makes sense for this game. Warlord's Throne takes a long time. Unless I were to chop it out. I could chop it out. All right, we're doing lots of healing. Lots and lots of healing. You took a hit, and I was hoping you would take the hit because I held on to your promotion, so I'm going to take the garrison promotion. I was going to take this. Let's get as much experience on our archers as possible. If I attack with this guy, he'll get a level up. If I attack with this guy, you get 10 experience for killing a city. So always look for someone who's going to get a level up from getting the kill. This guy will get a level up, right? You can see that our 12 experience. So we've retaken our city. I'm, ki I'm kind of tempted to hand this back to you right now and see how you deal with crossbowmen. But um, I'm not that mean. <laughs> I'm not that mean. I'll go for a little bit longer. I'll try to get you up to a stable position. Right, so I think now we have enough military. Uh, I need this campus right here, which means I want to chop this. 
if I this campus is 11 turns if I chop this this will not only force a little bit of food into the city but it will bring the campus down to nine turns it might seem dumb to be building campuses but just remember you're in a war right you don't get to go when you're in a war for your own survival you don't get to think about your win condition because your win condition is predicated on you surviving the war so the war is everything Let's get the amber. Now we have a second copy of amber. Let's have a look and see if someone doesn't have it. Right, you don't have it. What would you give me? He'll give me five gold per turn. What about Wilfred? Wilfred, what will you give me for my amber? Wilfred will give me ten gold per turn. I haven't met anyone else and I'm at war with him. So that's the best deal I can get. We're up to 36 gold per turn, which is really, really great. Now it's 46. Tushpa is falling. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get units up there. So there. Now we won the military emergency. We get plus five healing in the target's uh, territory, which means we can be much more aggressive. We also get 100 diplomatic favor, which we can then immediately sell to the AI. Okay. He'd even give me his relic. I don't want your relic. I want your gold. So I'm going to cut that down to 80 and see if he'll still accept this deal. Just cut it down until he no longer accepts the deal. 65. Sorry, 65. All right, so he, somewhere between 60 and 65, he'll accept the deal. 62 for 400 gold and 17 gold per turn. The reason why we're targeting Wilfred is because he's currently contender number one for the most dangerous civ in the game for us. Look how many cities he has. Look at his science and culture yield. So he's a big problem. So if we can absorb all of his gold, he'll be less of a problem. Similarly, we're going to take the rest of this uh, diplomatic favor. We're going to take it to the Maori. I'm going to just say, hey, give me whatever you want, right? 12 gold per turn, not ideal, but it's more than we had before. Now we have 600 gold. Now we can start doing stuff. I'm going to take a uh, tortoise. Remember, swordsmen are meat shields. They are there to absorb damage, not deal it. Looks like we also have this. Ideal situation would be building uh, triremes right now. Galleys, rather. So that we can hit this from the water. I'm going to cancel the campus and get two galleys out, ideally. Ideally, I would also have the card plugged in that gives me 100% production towards naval units. So what I'm going to do is do that after I get Theology. Okay, what other chops can we do in here safely? Well, we plan to get rid of this jungle tile. Also, important thing to do. If you are going to lose a city, go into your nearest city and take all the tiles. Okay, make sure you do that. Because what that'll mean is you'll have more tiles that count as your terrain. And you'll have more options for, uh, you know, managing the terrain on, on the counter-offensive. Really, really important that you do that. Let's see. So you're chopping there. You've got one chop left. I want you to get up to this city. This was this guy's job. I want you to go up here and see if you can deal with this. This is my Arrow Storm Archer. I'll still do a bit of damage. Meat Shields moving out. I only need one Swordsman to take this city, I think. Although I will bring two. Gordian is actually open, so I'm going to push for Gordian. Galley a little bit sooner. I'm going to purchase the temple. Also, you don't need this much food. You have way too much food. Uh, I'll, y y too much food is a problem. You need a mixture of food and housing. Food, housing, and amenities. You can't just get, get one. If you, get, if you focus too much on any one of them, your growth will suffer. You need a mixture. You cannot focus on one. Um, okay, so we got theology. Let's pick up defensive tactics because defensive tactics leads to a lot of really important civics. Unfortunately, we are at war with both of these. So that's bad. I'm going to I'm gonna pick up... I have plenty of gold. I'm going to pick up Nazca for the bit of extra faith. We've nowhere we could settle. We could maybe settle over here if we had access to the water, but we don't. So our only option is to kill Persia right now.
All right. So there's Immortals and Crossbowmen guarding a really, really difficult to attack city. Catapults might help. Who knows? Um, yeah, this is just rough, but we're making progress at least. We have plenty of gold. Let's harvest that. Shave three turns off the Warlord's Throne. Didn't expect that archer to die. That's unfortunate. That was a really highly leveled archer. If I remember correctly, we're going to take uh, emplacement. We want expert marksman, ideally. The crossbowman stepped out of the city. This is a huge opportunity. Getting a kill on a crossbowman like that is a huge deal. A crossbowman is the thing that I'm afraid of. I'm not afraid of anything else right now. Okay, we have one galley. We want another one. I completely forgot to plug in the card for galleys production. I wanted, I want four, uh, I want four or five galleys to be able to continuously attack Tarsus. I'm going to take Gordian first. We could build the Mahabodhi Temple. It would take us way too long. What is this city working? It's working productive tiles. That's good. We have access to extra iron. I would maybe get another swordsman. How fast can you build one? Ten turns. Four turns. Swordsman over galley while we have the production boost in here. Uh, this city is in really bad shape. It needs builders. It needs growth. I'm just going to work on a water mill. Seven turns is pretty quick. Games and recreation into defensive tactics. The reason we're going for defensive tactics. Uh, I'm actually going to try to... I'm going to force end the turn. While having a uh, civic unselected. So that I can change my government for free. That's the uh, free government change exploit. I've talked about it before in some of my other videos. So because I deselected a civic and then forced ended a turn but shift enter i can actually change my government for free we're going to get rid of conscription and we're going to plug in maritime industries we have plenty of gold to the point where conscription isn't really a big deal it's only about 13 14 gold uh we need to get if we can get free damage on this we will this immortal needs to die immortal is now dead we need a warrior on this side of the river and two warriors on this side of the river also, this is a unique improvement. It will disappear when we capture the city, so you should always look to pillage them. This could be a great source of gold if I had anything I could do with that gold. Can I purchase a great person with about a thousand gold if I were to have a thing right now? No. Okay. Uh, let's just take a turn to heal. We'll get plus we'll get plus ten healing because we completed that military emergency. Games of Recreation, Defensive Tactics, go. Tile Improvement, maybe a Plantation there. I don't think that's the right thing to do. Aqueduct. Da, 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 da. All right, looking okay. Don't put a mine in this tile. This tile will get messed up with. You harvest that forest. Okay, got it. Ideally, I would have built Ancient Walls here. Um, you can see his military strength has come back up, which is scary. us again to be able to defend step back with everyone who's wounded being on the offense is a lot harder than being on the defense let me tell you if i can take gordian and tarsus Pasargade now has walls, which is really bad. Nobody else is building walls, right? No walls over here. No walls. Uh, there's walls in Ispahan. Galley completed. This mountain range is crazy. Wait, is this the Zangyi? Two great merchants and two great general points if you own at least one tile. Oh my god, I should have purchased this a long time ago. In fact, I should purchase both tiles to lower the chance that Canada gets them. Um, yeah, owning this is giving me should have been giving me great general points. I don't know if you just missed this or you didn't know it was here or something, but uh, you, this should have been a priority. Um, so a single great person point is worth about 16 gold per turn, <coughs> to put that in perspective. So by spending about you know 300 gold, I'm able to get 
uh, nearly 60 gold per turn in terms of, like, value. Now, you can make an argument about, how, like, that's a sort of objective measure, but the subjective value of that might only be a couple of gold per turn for one of those, right? Anyway. Okay, we have two galleys completed. Do I want more? I think I need more. Do you have to take out Tarsus? I'm going to need to attack it from the water. All right, this archer is a problem. Step you back all the way. Levied from Kabul. So these are units that were levied from Kabul. His nine envoys, so there's no way we break that. Looks like he levied like warriors or something and then upgraded them. Okay, so we got the kill on that immortal. Step both of these warriors forward. This is just a hor horrifying choke point that we're dealing with right now. Okay, there is the Warlord's Throne. The reason we went for the Warlord's Throne is because we're going to need any amount of production we can get in order to recover. We don't have any room to settle, so the Ancestral Hall makes no sense. We don't have enough cities to go tall. Our only hope is to war our way out of this problem. Watermill, then we'll look into another uh, district. Probably a campus. Would like to get a theater square. In fact, there's a really good theater square right there. Watermill into the theater square seems good. Promote, take researcher. We're behind technologically in terms of warfare. Once the war is done, we can look to go culture, right? That's that's the thing. Once the war is done, then culture is an option. So many units. But the good news is he has no gold because he can't upgrade any of them. Just get rid of some of these. God. All right, so we're healing up a whole bunch of units. Let's look for gold. Hong Kong, plus one envoy. That would be production in the capital. If I wait a turn, I can swap in the extra envoy card. Okay. We got another swordsman. Seven turns until crossbowmen. So you can see now that our science is somewhere reasonable, we'll be able to get crossbowmen. I'm going to be saving my gold to get mass crossbowmen upgrades. So I'm going to try to preserve my uh, archers, keep them alive. Let's get ourselves two more archers while they're still cheap. And we'll use gold to upgrade them. We'll just do a little poke forward with our galleys. Okay, I have no idea. Crossbowman, immortal, 76 damage. Holy shh. So I don't think we can advance until we have crossbowman. So we're just going to play it safe, retreat, and heal. This time I'm going to come in here. I'm going to plug out Charismatic Leader, put in, put in a Diplomatic League. Then I will send the trade route to Hong Kong and immediately get two envoys. And then when we get our next envoy, we could maybe get suzerainty of them. But it's not that important. It's just a small little optimization thing. 
All right, uh, Priscilla. I need an encampment. Really, I need a carnival. It's a much better campus right here. And a really good theater square. Um, got a swordsman in here. The war is everything. Remember that. Okay, I'm really sad that I lost the swordsman there. The good news is he's the one approaching me now. Let's take the tortoise promotion here. Okay, we can maybe kill this quadrireme, and in fact we can. Awesome, it's dead. I don't know if that was a quadrireme actually, I didn't actually check it. So now we have three galleys, so we should be able to attack Tarsus, at least begin to attack it. I'd love to get these infrastructure buildings up. What is the current thing? City center production. Right, let's get a uh, water mill. We should take advantage of that city center production while it's available. The swordsman might die. Okay, this immortal should be next. I'm trying to think, how do I get this swordsman into a position? I step you forward, I step you forward, I step you here. You ca you keep healing, you step here. should really heal on a different tile because you're blocking the road. You heal, you're healing. Okay. Stay fortified. Shoot this immortal. Get that kill. Now he's providing support bonuses to this in case melee attacks are happening. Melee attacks are unlikely to happen. Maybe I should have retreated you, but you should. You have tortoise, and these are all ranged attackers, and you're double fortified on defensive terrain, and also being attacked across the river in case they go for melee. So you should be pretty hard to kill. You should be. You should be pretty hard to kill. Let's take a moment to heal on both these guys. Interesting. Healing used up all my boat's movement. I don't think I've seen that before. It's odd. Losing an archer. Not ideal, but it's fine. Three turns until crossbowman. We've got another crossbowman coming out. Danger, danger, high voltage. Stuff. This archer needs to die. This guy needs to die. How do I achieve that? Like this? If you were to attack, you would soften him up significantly to the point where this swordsman could kill him. Then this crossbowman will likely have to retreat. You may die, but your sacrifice will not be in vain. Heal. Alright, we're making progress. We're alive. Yep, this is what I'd hoped. These guys are taking hits, but we're alive. World Congress. Uh... I want units to be... Do I? He's probably building a lot of units, and I want units to be more expensive, I think. I'm going to just... I think the AI likes to vote for 50% production, so I'm going to vote for that as well in the hope that I get the diplomatic point. The other one is Faith, but I don't think they vote for that one as much. Yeah, so the AI likes to vote for this one a lot. And that's going to mean that we're going to see a lot more units now, but also we can start producing a lot more. So this is just all us all in for war now. Um, I will get the campus though, because that's important. We're all in war now. Um, because the hope is that we are just more efficient than the AI. You need to take that hit for me. I need you to retreat. Okay, army's in position. I've got a little navy. We're not going for Tarsus yet. This is a big problem, right? Trying to, 
we've we've got a we've got a really really difficult position because of this mountain these this triple mountain here. We can't push it to Gordia without Archer without Crossbowman coming up from the south to hit us, and we can't push Tarsus without uh, Swordsman coming up from the south. And we don't have a big enough army to push both. That's why we have the navy. The navy will support Tarsus' assault. Right now, what we're trying to do is just be more efficient than the AI. That's why we have to now produce mass produce uh, units. Because look, they're going to be pumping out units every single turn with that uh, World Congress thing that passed. Which means our life got a lot more difficult. We did not get that kill. That is severely disappointing. That I did not get that kill. I have never been as disappointed in my life because he's going to promote now and potentially kill an archer. So here comes the endless wave of knights because of the, the World Congress vote that passed. Yep, this is my favorite part of the game. The good news is we have our own crossbowmen. Just take a hit for me for a turn. Okay, that's as many crossbowmen as I can get this turn. Let's go for knights now. You can really see how, like, it's been 50 turns and we're still fighting this war. That's really, again, it's, it's so important. That's because the momentum of your game was so far in the wrong direction that every decision I make only slightly nudges it back in the right direction. Um, and it takes a long time for the effect of my actions to ripple down through the gameplay. All right. We just need to spam units. It's the only hope. The, like, and again, I really want to be very clear. Why we are caught in this never-ending war, okay? First of all, you didn't do your diplomacy at the start of the game. Always look for ways that you can improve your relation with people. Send them delegations of the first time that you meet them. Get up borders with them as soon as you can. Send them gifts if they look unhappy. And build a military to make them less likely to attack you. As far as I can tell, you didn't do any of those things. So we're trapped in this because we can't build settlers to get out of this problem. We can't... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We can't build... We don't have enough cities... And we can't build settlers to get out of the problem. So we're stuck in a war forever until we win the war. That's it. That's that's pretty that it's pretty straightforward. Now we're losing a lot of units right now, but that's okay because we just got a huge power spike. And that'll allow us to fight back a little bit more effectively. So don't upgrade wounded units. Don't do it. It's tempting. Don't do it. Heal them up and then upgrade them. Because if you upgrade a wounded unit and it dies, that's just like a lot of production and gold wasted. I really want mercenaries. Unfortunately, I won't be able to get it for a long time. I don't think they're... It's still possible for you to win a culture victory. But it's very, very unlikely because you've just been caught in this absolutely grueling war. Alright, promote Pingala with connoisseur and researcher. This gives you a great source of science and culture without actually having to build campuses or theater squares. And like, if I had been building more military back here, yeah, we would win the war sooner, but we would also just lose the game because we didn't have enough uh, actual yields. So these are going to have ripple effects a long time down the road. Okay, I really need units to not die. Can you kill here? Swap these two. Always look for a way to keep your units alive. It's one of the most important things you can do. There's a crossbowman in that city. I need to kill something. To prevent that damage. You really can't shoot from here. This is so ob obnoxious. Yeah, this crossbowman's dead, unfortunately. Let's get whatever kill we can. That sucks. There's way too much damage coming out. Unless I can step this swordsman forward. Yeah. That's a dead crossbowman. So this is again, right? Remember, 
just you're talking about momentum, right? Your momentum was so far in the wrong direction that to to pull it back to where it needs to be requires probably a hundred turns of gameplay. Okay, we managed to save the crossbowman, but it's still not looking great. I can't shoot from there. Just run this way. You sweep up this way. So I've because I went for this campus and theater square, I lost most of my army. It's fine. We needed those things because again, we need to get on par with his gain. We're losing so much now. And it's because, and again, I really want to stress this. This World Congress thing passing is the absolute worst thing that could happen to us this game. Um, goddamn Laurier put eight votes into it, completely ruining my game. Let's take Garrison. Can't afford to promote units right now. Should have built walls in Brasilla while I had the 100% production towards city center buildings. I didn't. No point crying over spilt milk now at this point. I could probably get peace, but I can't. Like, peace doesn't win me the game. It's just the unfortunate reality of the situation we find ourselves in. Also, I lost my friendship with Wilfred Laurier. Should totally have kept that up. Can I get him to join the war again? That's worth it. That'll take some of the heat off me and also allow him to use his military against him. Also, I'm going to retreat this crossbowman. Just look for kills. Get kills. It's the most important thing. So our military basically non-existent now. It's essentially dead. It's fine. This was a very expensive set of problems we've just encountered and i want to i want to stress two things killed us here this thing passing and me choosing to go for campus and theater square here because it meant that i had no resupplying army just stuck in a never-ending war man it doesn't feel good he's got knights like you can't let yourself fall behind like this in a game. A Civ, it's just never going to go well for you if you fall this far behind. You need to be getting ahead. And there's many, many different ways you can do that. Are you kidding me? I, You know what, man? That is the most painful thing in the entire game. When you shoot a unit and it survives on one health. Because now I have to sacrifice a swordsman to kill this. That's not a worthwhile trade. If he survives, it's a good trade. But if he won't survive. Um... Exit the evangelists. So now we're just going to pump out crossbowmen for ev from every single city until we stabilize. It's pretty much the only move we have. Now he's got walls and Gordian, right? Uh, well, at least these Kabul immortals aren't against me anymore. I can... Breathe a sigh of relief there. This promotion sucks, but I just took it because uh, it heals. I would really love, I would really love to get this save file from like turn one and show you just like ah, I hate this. This whole um. Can't shoot over hills because I can't goddamn chop these tiles. Should have got some. I should have gotten some builders in Brazil and chopped out a bunch of stuff. But right, because he has a tech like, because he has a technological advantage, we have to fight. Like he like think about it. He got crossbowmen. What was it like? Twenty turns before we got crossbowmen. He got knights like twenty turns before we got knights. He's gonna get the next unit like twenty turns before we get them. But. If we can get our science ahead of him, we can eventually overtake him and win the war. So this is what this is what we do. We just we get to 
Now, here's the thing. If I hadn't have built these campuses, we would have literally archers against what he has right now, right? Understand that. So yes, by building these things, I have sacrificed my army now. But in the future, by getting that science, I will have a stronger and more technologically advanced army that will be able to match the stronger, more technologically advanced army that he has. This is, this is a to-the-death war we're in right now. And we're playing for keeps. Now, I could have pieced him out. I could have pieced him out. Um, I could have tried to piece him out, rather. But he really does not want peace. So that's just like, we have to stay in this war. Everything is about winning the war. Just don't even think about culture. I built that uh, theater square for uh, extra culture per turn, not like cultural victory. Okay, so this is actually pretty fortuitous here. Now you have the garrison promotion. I'm going to step you forward, step you forward, shoot there, shoot there. I'm going to step here to provide flanking. I would love to upgrade that crossbowman. I need more money. You give me eight gold per turn for that little bit of diplomatic favor. I'll take it. Okay, another crossbowman on the way. Now, immortal or knight? The knight is a threat, but the immortal is a kill. Forty combat strength on these cities. That's really horrific. We're all apprentices in it. There's apprenticeship. Let's kill this knight. He's gone. Take your volley promotion to be able to kill units more effectively. Are you kidding me? I just... Uh, it's the most obnoxious thing when a unit survives with almost no health. Our next melee unit will be knights. There's feudalism. Feudal contract. Awesome. Take this out. We're not building those anymore. Save a bit of gold. Plus one production in every city. Is that really worth it? If I'm going to make builders, I should get them better, right? No, I'm just going to pump out production for units. It's the only thing I have to save the game. I need to move on Tarsus. It's building walls. Can't let it finish the walls. If it finishes the walls, we can't make a move until bombards. Or at the very least, maybe knights with battering rams or something. There's feudalism. We want to go for mercenaries. Mercenaries because it gives me a 50% gold discount on upgrading units. It's a big deal. Why does this guy do so much damage? So, in order to take on a Quadrarium, you need at least two galleys. And even then, it's kind of dicey. Going down a narrow passage like this makes it even dicier. Okay, I think we have... We are going to need a battering ram. We're going to need a siege tower for knights. We are going to get started on producing heavy chariots soon. Get a catapult. Heavy chariot in three turns. Let's get another crossbowman. All right. Swap. Attack. Fall back. Kill with the crossbowman. Shoot. Is there a road on this tile?
All right. So we're moving on Tarsus. Tarsus is our next target. Got a crossbowman in Priscilla. We need an encampment. I was trying to hold off on building an encampment, but we're going to go ancient walls into an encampment in here. It's the only way that we're going to make a difference. <laughs> God, I feel so trapped in this war. This guy's almost healed up. He can rejoin the ar army. Okay, thankfully this crossbowman survived. Swap here. Shoot. Can't quite get that. After knights, I really need to pick up shipbuilding so I can disembark uh, a unit up here. I do have this guy with the amphibious, which allows him to scale... Scale cliffs? No? I guess I got the wrong promotion. That sucks. I need to be able to scale cliffs to get up to this tile to prevent the city from healing every turn. I guess it's not that big of a deal. Head to Rio and heal. You're fine. You wait there. So you can see, his units tend to come in waves, and then there's a big lull where you have an opportunity to do damage. So we have beaten the most recent wave. Think of it like that. This crossbowman is in a dangerous spot. He could die. I need a melee unit up front and center. Likely, if I get to work on a heavy chariot. Heavy chariot will take two turns. Knight will take two turns. Heavy chariot and the knight will finish on the same turn, which means the knight research will get the priority, which means the production for the heavy chariot will be transmuted into a knight, which will allow us to get a knight sooner. Also, we're losing 15 gold per turn. Uh, let's talk to some of these guys. You pay one gold per turn for my amber. That's not good enough. You pay 11 gold per turn for amber. I am running conscription. I paid laurier 30 gold, 13 gold, which is a problem. We're going to need commercial hubs. Which is unfortunate because I don't really, can't really afford to build commercial hubs right now. We're going to need a builder to chop that tile and then a commercial hub there. Swordsman come this way. The reason I want five galleys is so that two galleys can always be attacking the city. Although it doesn't matter now because the city has 42 combat strength. It would have mattered back when I had like 20. All right, let's bring the siege tower forward, bring more crossbowmen forward. So we're carpeting the map in crossbowmen now. Just wait until musketmen appear, right? That's going to be the next thing. When musketmen appear, let's just hope he doesn't roll nighter. Okay, let's get all of these guys to fall back to a safe place to heal. And we'll start hammering the city with incendiaries, ideally. So look at that. In a single turn, we did a very small amount of damage. And the damage you do to a city does accelerate the more damage you do to a city because of the way city health works. You can see here, minus two from damage district. If we could maybe pillage a district as well, that would make a difference. Yeah, standing here is dangerous for your health. Which means we're going to have to swap someone out there every turn if we can. Or have someone take the bait from this city by standing on a weak tile. Doing damage to the city very, very slowly. It's actually only on one less health than it was last turn. Because we've had to retreat some of the crossbowmen. It's very, very difficult to uh, do this without great generals, by the way. If I had great generals, if I had built encampments and had great generals... I'll be in great shape. But again, like, there's been a lot of points in this game where it's like, if I had this thing, I'd be in so much better shape. But at no point in the game was I ever positioned to make that thing for when I needed it now. Um, so we've got a knight. Let's build another knight. Probably want to build them in the capital, otherwise it'll take too long. The knight's going to help a lot with the siege tower. I will say that.
Yeah, it looks like a lot of people are going for culture. How many great writers have gone? One, two, three, four. Four great writers have gone, which is far from ideal. In a culture game, you should be playing well enough that you get 90% of the great writers. It's already looking really bad for us for a culture game. Now that we are in a position to maybe win the war, I do need to start thinking about my transition out of the war. But that needs to come much later when I'm actually secure in my position. Right now, do I need to keep building units? I think I have enough units right now. I can go for an amphitheater here. I'll just get it. Maybe it'll translate into something useful. Plug this into Antioch, get two envoys. I'll take Suzerainty of Antioch because it's worth era score. And it'll also give me diplomatic favor that I can sell to the AI to gain a little bit more cash to prevent the deficit. Give me 63 gold. It's not ideal, but hurting Wilfred Laurier's gold per turn is really important. I really want to stress that. So this guy did an important thing. He took the hit from Gordian so that I could have more archers or... No! This wasn't the guy I wanted to have selected. Whatever. I wanted to move this guy up. It's fine. If I had a catapult now, it would make a difference. I don't have a catapult. So the point is moot. If I could have a couple of archers hitting this city as well. You might actually die here if I don't pull you back. How much damage does City do? City did 55 damage. You're now fortified. So you've taken minus 3 health. Yeah, you could die. Alright, Tarsus, we are chipping away at it, like I said. And we do have a catapult now. Which can make a difference. Bring the other galley over. That encampment is a big problem. It means we're not going to be able to get us around on the city. Let's take the garrison promotion. If this city pulls up walls mid uh, crossbowman siege, it's going to be very, very bad for us. We can start chipping away at the city. Looks like Canada's doing its job up to the north, at least distracting. Uh, so now that I have a full health galley, I can slam both of these galleys into this city to bring its health down so that next turn we do more damage. You want to have a full health galley to actually take the city in a coastal situation like this. Alright, this city used a um, cannon. It didn't do a crossbowman shot. Which either means it has medieval walls, which it does. Or he has access to field cannons, which is really bad. It didn't do that much damage, so I think it was just um, the medieval walls that did it. I'm going to have you fortify for a turn. Unfortunately, you would die if I did that. Let's do as much damage to the city as possible. Garrison promotions. We want to get promotions now, even though it'll slow down the current capturing of the city. Because in future captures, it will speed it up. I would love to get the library right now. I just can't afford it. I need knights. Ideally, I would have picked up monarchy to get chivalry. I kind of wish I had done that now, but mercenaries is equally important. I need uh, income. I need income somehow. Diplomatic favor is my only way to get income. I could sell you foxes. You could be six gold per turn. Plus this, seven gold per turn. All right. Well, we're stabilizing at near zero income. Okay, crossbowman in the city. This is what I was talking about earlier. Once there, once the city has walls and a ranged unit inside it, it's over. You're never attacking that city. You're never, ever, ever attacking a city with a ranged unit. On any difficulty higher than Emperor, you're never doing it unless you can rip down the walls in a single turn. That's the only way. But we did capture Tarsus, which is a really big deal. Because you can win the game on on you can win the game on five cities, right? You could win the game from this position. Um, so here's what you need to do. 
I've played for 75 turns, which is about as long as you played. I'm going to send the save file back to you. And you're going to play up until turn 225. Here's your objective. You need to get the military engineering. You need to look for Niter. If you don't find Niter to get bombards, then what you need to do is you need to turtle hard. <laughs> okay? Uh, you're not going to go for a culture victory this game. It's not happening. Um, just accept it. Culture victory is not happening this game. It's either science or domination. So I've taken Tarsus. Um, we're in position to potentially attack Gordian next. But I, I would I would count this as having saved the game, okay? This player is not dead and, and is in a position. Like, I could win the game from this position, and so could another player. So I feel like I have gotten you to the point where... It's not, it's far from ideal and a lot of stuff has gone wrong. But if you look at Persia, Persia has 80 military strength. He has no military. As long as you can figure out a way to get these walls down. Also, very, very important. Wait for his crossbowman to come out of the city. <laughs> Don't attack the city until the crossbowman comes out. Uh, also, make sure, again, make sure you pick up military engineering. And uh, like, also, don't build any infrastructure. Until Persia is dead, you can spend time building like non-military stuff in like one in four things that you build should be a non-military unit as like right i want to be very clear about that i've built a huge military and then i built infrastructure builder amphitheater encampment still building a night over here the city needs to repair so i'll just do some repairs right you need to keep pumping out military you need to keep pumping out knights crossbowmen uh so if you can't get the bombard Push for field cannons and look for a way to make money. Um, the way to make money is to build a whole bunch of commercial hubs, get external trade routes, commercial hubs, markets, external trade routes. In fact, that should really what we... In an ideal game, that's exactly what I would be doing right now, is I would be going uh, commercial hub. So this was aqueduct, industrial zone, industrial zone, aqueduct. So commercial hub can fit nicely right there. Right? In an ideal scenario right now, because you are just stuck at war until you kill persia um and get enough cities to win the game you're just stuck at war um so get commercial hubs get commercial hubs get markets trade with canada for as much gold as you can get use that gold to either upgrade into bombards or field cannons failing that so like if you can't get bombards to rip down the cities you got to just go for field cannons and query series, which is why I'm building crossbowmen and knights. I have a catapult because if I can turn that into a bombard, it's kind of like a long-term thing. Also, I have a swordsman, right? But this this is your this is your transition out of your current position. There is no peaceful transition. Until you have Persia dead, you cannot win this game. I want you to be very very clear on that. The person this is for the person I'm sending this file back to. I played for 75 turns. I saved your skin. You have a little bit of science, a little bit of culture. Actually, let me see. Can I get peace? No, still can't get peace with per Persia, right? So you're just stuck in this war forever. Um, so here's what you can do. Get a whole bunch of gold. Build this library, build this commercial, build this market. Get up to Bombard Field Cannon. That's your goal, right? Try to get Bombards and Field Cannons out and keep pushing Persia. Right now... For the next, I would say 10 to 20 turns, you're on the defense. You're letting him come to you. You've taken Tarsus. This was the easiest city to take. All of his cities has, have walls. The only way you can take down cities with walls is with bombards or field cannons. All right. Yeah, I'm going to call that. I'm going to call this game saved because a player could win from this position. It's far from an ideal position. I definitely made some mistakes along the way, and I could have done this a lot better. But I feel like I did a really good job illustrating how to survive getting murdered. Um, and that's really just using every ounce of every resource, of every move, of everything you can to buy every turn that you can. Like, if you remember, there were times when I was, like, sacrificing archers just to get one more turn of production in Rio de Janeiro to get another archer. And that's the kind of way you have to play. You have to play, like... You have to, you have to play, like, you're going to lose. If you don't play, if you don't, you know, win. <laughs> it sounds really fucking dumb. But you, you know what I mean, right? All right, I'm going to save this game. This is called Just Stay Alive. Just win 
the game forehead. Okay, that's that's your goal. I want to. You you're not allowed to send the save back to me. All right, you're not allowed to send the save back to me until it's turn 225. All right, I love you all. Thank you guys for watching. Save the disaster, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.